Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Digital Nomad World weekly series. I'm Becky, and I'll be your host. And today, we're talking with Margo Miller about remote networking as a remote professional. Margo, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much, Becky, for having me. It's wonderful to see you here, Margo, and I'm excited to share how we met and especially about remote networking, which we were not remote with it, but you know, it it let it leads a long way and it can really connect people. So excited to jump into this topic. But first of all, I want to talk about this term remote professional. You like to refer to yourself as a remote professional. Um, and can you explain why? Yeah, absolutely. So I think a lot of times when people are working remotely, historically, there's a certain connotation that comes with that. Maybe they're not really that focused. Maybe they are just traveling and having fun and they're kind of working, you know? And I think we've done a good job in the last few years of starting to combat that a little bit. But when people are moving from city to city or country to country and they're truly living um, this kind of exploratory, like nomadic lifestyle, then people tend to call them just a nomad, you know, or a digital nomad. But I think still today, even with all the last few years, a digital nomad is often still brings up a connotation in people's mind of somebody who is quite young, junior in their career, or maybe they're like hopping around hostels or like, you know, kind of crummy places to stay. They're just kind of making basic amount of money in order to go to the beach the rest of the time. We know you and I, Becky, in this community here that that's not true, right? That a lot of digital nomads have careers, have, you know, very serious professional roles, and so for me, it's like, I'm kind of trying to change that narrative a little bit. So, so when someone, you know, I'm currently, I'm Canadian, but I'm currently in Prague for a while. And so when I meet someone, they kind of say, what are you doing here? Or why? I'll use, like you say, the term, I'm a remote professional. You know, I can work from anywhere. I have a great, a great organization, a great job. And, you know, and so therefore I'm here temporarily exploring the cultural aspects of this city, but I'm, I'm not of that world of, you know, living out of a backpack like I, I'm wearing a blazer right now for this, this interview and I'm currently just a month in Prague I have two blazers in my bag like I'm, I'm still you know behaving like a professional as I am um, I just happen to be doing it in a city that's not my own and so for me to craft that narrative a little bit differently I call it something a little different and and feel free you know everyone use this term as much as you'd like remote professional if you feel like digital nomad doesn't quite give the connotation that you want I love that. And yes, we are called Digital Nomad World. Everyone knows that watching this show. But I yeah. like this. You can craft your own narrative, whatever you feel is representing you along your traveling journey, because that's really what it is. We're traveling and working. Um, go ahead and use it. And I think that's great. And I'm sure that it's commanding more respect from these people that are listening to your answer. So, yes. I love it. Yeah, it's very possible. There's certain, you know, some people have certain connotations and expectations. We know in this community that a digital nomad can mean a wide range of things. Um, and so, but I think for me, it feels like it brings certain opportunity. And well, I'm sure we'll talk about that. Yes, yes. And before we get any further, I just want to ask you about your background. How did you get started as a remote professional? Yes. I feel like I was very lucky in a way. I was always somebody who traveled a lot just personally. I enjoyed my vacations and I'm exploring the world, but I always did feel like constrained a little bit, feel as though I was constrained by kind of the regular in office lifestyle, but I didn't really know what was out there and available. And so um, when I was looking for a new role after my last one, which was an in-person organization, it was early pandemic, which was actually kind of irrelevant to the story because what happened was it was early pandemic. I was looking for kind of what was my next career move period. I didn't necessarily know what was so available to me in the remote world at the time. I knew I wanted more flexibility, but I didn't know what that necessarily looked like. And I found a dream job on LinkedIn, which is my current role. Um, but I didn't even realize that it was fully remote. Like the description of the role itself was a dream job. And then when I kind of read the final piece of the job description, it happened to be a company that was fully remote. And so I'm looking into it. And sometimes with these companies, you think too, it, I hadn't, I didn't know much about them. I thought, you know, is this fake? Is it, is it truly a, you know, an opportunity that I can do? Um, anyway, lo obviously long story short, I ended up in that role, but there was like an intimidating piece to really moving remote because as someone who I'm working now for an American company, but I'm based in Canada and they have staff all over the world. And so people like me 
are not employees of the company. So I have a sole proprietorship. I had to open that up. I had to make sure I was getting paid properly. You have to figure out your taxes, which can be daunting when you're uncertain. You know, am I doing things correctly? Don't want to make sure that at the end of the year, you know, that I've saved enough money for that. So there's all these aspects that, um, you know, come up later. And this is a whole separate conversation. I'm sure you've talked about it in some of your episodes, but um, that was kind of my journey is, is as far as like looking for the new role. So it was this kind of flip that just happened. I went from a, you know, a, a normal job, quote unquote, in an office role, early pandemic. And then this company, I'm so lucky with TopTel because they're fully distributed and remote all over the world. They've never had offices. They never will. Um, and so they're set up like technologically so well. So I didn't have any kind of like burden of stepping into that remote world because it was a company that already knew how to do it really, really effectively. That is such a key difference. I know from working for several different fully remote organizations, I'm glad you got into that first as the first transition from an in-office job. Yes, I feel spoiled a little bit, I think, after hearing other people's stories along the way, Becky. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm glad. I'm glad that you're thriving in this role. And we're going to talk a little bit about that later. But first, I want to focus on what I know is one of your pass passions, which is remote networking. So what is remote networking? Just to start off. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I've never actually Googled to see if this is a real term. I just started using it, Becky. So we'll have to <laughs> uh, do our own research. But yeah, I, I refer to remote networking as essentially, you know, maybe another term would be online networking. I don't mean like networking while you are remotely working somewhere, although that is part of, that is why I'm doing it. But um, yeah, so so essentially synonymously, we could say online networking. Um, I like to do remote or online networking for a few reasons. Like, first of all, it doesn't matter where you are on the world. Everyone is available to you now. Like we just have such an interconnected society and world. People used to talk about, you know, six degrees of separation. I feel like the average person you want to reach now is maybe two degrees, um, especially because you have tools like LinkedIn where you can literally see how many degrees away they are of you, right? So if I didn't know you, Becky, and I looked up your name on LinkedIn, it could say like, you know, third degree connection, meaning like there's two other people in my net, like I reach one person who reaches one person who reaches you, right? And so, and you can literally see that, maybe not the exact path of people on LinkedIn, but you, you can get that insight. And so if you want something, if you want to communicate with someone, it's so much more accessible than it used to be. So regardless of whether you're digital nomad or not, do online networking, do remote networking, be brave. There's so much benefit from it. And we'll talk about that. But um, as far as tips for for kind of doing it effectively, um, or, or like why I'm why I'm trying to do it in these effective ways, you know, there's there's a lot there's a lot in that question. I think that I um, I use online networking in order to then build deeper or, or faster in person connections when I am traveling somewhere. So really big advantage is you send messages in advance online. Um, so hey Becky, I'm coming to your city. I am, I have a connection to you in some way. So really key point, find common ground between you and that person. It's going to be a lot more impact and then have like a clear call to action. So it'd be a lot more impactful for me to say, Hey, Becky, you and I both are podcasters. I'm coming to your city. I would love to have a coffee with you, you know, learn about your city, learn about where you, where you record, how you podcast. Um, I just think we're like-minded. I'm going to be there for a month. This is my most free week. You know, are you, do you happen to be around? I'm happy to come anywhere and meet you. So you've had like a really clear question. Like, I'd like to have coffee. This is the week. Are you open to meet me? Um, and then leaving flexibility for them to, you know, not feel like it's too precise, but you've found common ground around podcasting. So the person actually knows why they would care to talk to you and take time out of their busy schedule to come have a coffee with you. Um, and you've left enough time in advance for if this person doesn't respond to you, you know, send five more and make sure you tee up a coffee for yourself or a meeting for yourself. So then you have, you know, a local friend when you get there, they can tell you some places to go and be like, it's going to enhance your experience so much more. So, you know, the first piece of online networking or remote networking is, you know, if you, if there's someone you want to reach for any kind of reason, like getting a job or what, or whatever it might be, um, or finding a new opportunity in life of some kind, not necessarily a job opportunity, then you can do that. No matter where you are, you don't have to be in the same city. And then the second reason I like to, to talk about it and do it really well 
is because it can really enhance your experience when you get somewhere way less lead up time if you have locals ready to hang out with you and give you all the tips. I really love this. And I would love to even put this into more perspective. Like if you could share a few successful examples that you have experienced with this. Definitely. So, I mean, the first is my current role. So when I found that role on LinkedIn, I, so this is years ago now, but I would probably not have even been in the pile. I was from a small city in Canada. They hire all over the world. They get a thousand applicants for roles like mine. The short listing of the system, you know, I probably wouldn't, well, I would not have been even in the pile, Becky, because even though, you know, clearly I had the experience and ability, I am in the role now, but there's just, when you get a thousand resumes, companies have to shortlist in some way, right? And I don't think I would have had the keywords necessary to kind of get into that pile. So I sent a message on LinkedIn because the posting had the hiring kind of team listed on it. And what I didn't know was the message I sent was to who would end up being my future boss. And I sent a message to her and said, uh, you know, kind of concisely, hi, I I believe I'm a fit for this role. I've just applied. We'd love to have 15 minutes of your time to understand how you've enjoyed the organization and where you see kind of the like the direction of this going, something along those lines. Make it, I made it about them because people prefer to talk about themselves than they do you. So you saying, I'm the best. Can I tell you why I'm the best? The person's kind of going to go, yeah, there's a thousand of you. Like, are you, I don't know. I don't have time to look at this, right? But Sometimes when you're asking people to talk about their own experience, they're more likely. So that's a real hot tip in here, no matter what you're using it for. But anyway, so so that's a, a long story short here. My current role, I, I got that meeting. I got put in the pile. Then I still had to go through the whole process myself, but that person put me in that pile. Um, and then great examples for right now. So not job related. If you just want to network, you're going somewhere. So this month in Prague, I had both an invitation to a breakfast for local Prague community builders. So my, my role on normal day, I'm, I'm a global director of community. I build community for, for TopTel. Um, so a, a community builders breakfast meant for like Czech community builders. So I was invited to that. We got to meet a lot of amazing people that like-minded, same career as me all at once. Really amazing. And also I ended up that I'll be delivering a talk on women in tech from a Canadian perspective to a Czech women in tech group at the Prague Chamber of Commerce next week. So, and that was, those were just from sending, you know, a few messages. I think I sent 10 messages and got those two opportunities, which are pretty fabulous opportunities from 10 messages. So huge, uh, you know, easy examples there of why you should do this. That is incredible. I'm so glad you've shared this with us. When you reached out to those 10 and sent those 10 messages, did you have mutual connections? Like you said, did you start with like, or was it more a business minded thing? Like, Hey, we're both in charge of community or we reach out. How did you right. do that? That's a great question. So for the first one, I had a connection to someone. So it was a community building kind of person who I knew was connected to this event. And I had kind of met them through a community, a community of community builders. Um, and so I had that kind of pre-connection. But then once I got the invitation, I didn't mention this, but I took it a step further and I reached out to the organizers of the event and said, hey, you know, my friend so-and-so has referred me to your event. I already have a ticket. Just wanted to say hello. If you're around earlier, like would love to meet for coffee before the event or come early, you know, and kind of say hi. That, that might not be the best tactic depending on the event. People might be busy right before. But, you know, leading up to it, if you have a few days, then you could like meet the event organizers. Now, when you go, you're in with not only your referral, but the organizers. So there's all these things that you can do that are quite simple um, because you have all that information. You can see the event, you can see the organizers, you've already been invited. You have an in because your friend, you know, told you. So yeah, all that amazing. And then the second one um, for the 10 messages there that I sent, I was looking for a, an opportunity in women in tech and I do emceeing and hosting and moderating. And so I was looking for an opportunity to potentially use those skills for an event while I was in Prague, because I really love doing that. It also opens you up to an amazing community when you're the one on stage. Um, and so I, in those messages, I had that find that common ground that I talked about in a clear call to action. I saw an event around women in tech. It was the day before I was arriving. So I thought, oh, too bad. But I had a bunch of people listed who were the speakers, the organizers, all this stuff. So that's where I started reaching out. So I picked those people and said, hi, you know, I'm, I'm so, so like, I'm remiss to be missing your event. I'm arriving in town right after that said, I'm a woman in tech. Here's my experience. I often speak on this. I often MC and moderate. If you could use those skills while I'm in town, here's my dates. Or if not, I'd love to just know if you have any other events that I, you know, that I didn't see online yet, because I'd love to be involved in your community while I'm in town. 
So you're not like pressuring too much. It's not just about hiring you. You're saying I care in a broader sense. Um, and that brought me this wonderful opportunity to be speaking to the Prague Chamber of Commerce. It's, it's incredible. And something tells me not a lot of people are doing this right now, because if you're asking to meet for coffee or all these things, if a lot of people are doing the same, you might be getting more no's. But the fact that you're able to get in there and you, it's really targeted and you can have coffee and it's so important to do these face to face things, even though we're talking about online networking. Um, it's yeah. it's something. Yeah, it's it's powerful. So I think this is such valuable information. And I'm Absolutely. wondering I, if, if have you have you already given the talk on women in tech? I have people. not. I have not. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's coming up. Because I, I'm always curious, too, and maybe you can speak to a previous experience you've had, like when you reach out, when you do these talks, what can it lead to after? That is a fabulous question, Becky. And I think the world is your oyster. Um, you know, I have one example of this is a, a friendship example. So it's not even a work example necessarily, but one of my best friends is someone who reached out to me on LinkedIn only a few years ago, like as an adult friendship and was moving back to the city that I lived in. She hadn't lived there in 15 years. And she wrote me on LinkedIn and said, hi, you seem very active in this city in Canada that we're in. I'm just moving back and would love to be able to connect with people like you, kind of re-get the lay of the land and, and you know, just maybe connect with you because you look great, kind of to her, in her opinion, right? She thought I looked really engaged in the community, very aware of my city and what was happening. So brilliant for her, right? I'm going to reach out to someone who looks super involved in the city and knows what's going on. So smart tactic, but now she's one of my best friends. And we've been, you know, different places in the world together. And we we go to all kinds of amazing business events together because we are like-minded in that way. And she's got a very powerful LinkedIn as well. So it's uh, it's amazing what you can achieve from something. And then something like the, the Prague Chamber of Commerce kind of event or the Women in Tech event. Yeah, I mean, you go to an event in person and and you're on the docket, like you're someone everyone's looking at, that's who people want to come up and say hello to when the event's done and wrapping up. You know, that's who people are going to follow on social media. That's who people, you know, want to offer another follow-up opportunity to. So I'm sure anyone who's done like any of those things, you, you know that kind of it opens a lot of doors every single time, even if that's a small door or a window, you know. Um, so it, it's highly beneficial. I'm also thinking like if I had been looking at your resume for a future job and I saw that you gave a talk in Prague for women in tech, the Prague Chamber of Commerce, I would say, how does she know these people? What? How did she make these connections? She must be someone really special. But <laughs> yeah. truthfully, you just were going to Prague for a month. You reached out to these people and suddenly you're on stage. There's photos of you doing it. There's social media, yeah. like you said. It's It just leads to so many other things. Yeah. And that's a really, a really smart like sentence there, Becky. And it's not, you know, it, I think it's important that we say that, you know, I'm not super special. And I think, you know, I like to think I'm special in some ways. Becky, you are. I, I, You're I onto am, this. This is special I, I'm a, as well. I'm a business professional, you know, and we can, and so many people listening to this are as well, but they're just not going to put themselves out there and reach out for that extra step. And maybe some people listening are thinking, well, I'm not really a public speaker. So, okay, what's this, what's a version of this that I can have? You can still go to that event. Your call to action in that exact same message to the person running the event is, hey, I missed the event right before coming, but I'm in town for a month. I would love to be engaged in your community. Do you have any mixers or maybe smaller things coming up where I, where it would be a fit for me to attend? Like, you know, you just change the end of the sentence and you still will then, if you physically are there, like that community builders breakfast I went to, you still make new connections. You can still post on LinkedIn a picture of the event with you and some people in the photo. You can still tag new connections that you've made. So you can still take advantage of all of those opportunities that might come from it um, without being the one on stage. So for those listening, like if that doesn't feel right, that piece, still a lot that you can do. Yeah. And also, like, I think a lot of people don't give themselves enough credit or they don't know that there's this path to getting a new job that they're looking for. And it might be going to a women in tech conference and just meeting people, not being on stage yet. But a lot of people don't give themselves they don't give themselves permission to take that step forward and kind of be not aggressive, but just, you know, active and taking these steps you're mentioning. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And LinkedIn is so easy for that. So, you know, it tees it all up for you. So highly recommend taking these, these quick steps. Yes. And I'm curious for you, is there anything that is still on your bucket list in terms of remote networking, like any future goals that you're working towards achieving in that respect? Yeah, I mean, probably there's always more that I'm looking for. I'd like to emcee more large scale global events. 
Um, a lot of those events typically hire journalists. I am not a journalist. And so uh, you have to put yourself out there to be able to get those. So I think, you know, more of that. I'm working toward a TEDx talk, Becky. That's high up there. Yes. And um, and I eventually, you know, I would love an impactful interview style show where I get to speak to amazing people from around the world about their expertise. Uh, if anyone has that role for me, you know, hit me up. But uh, but ultimately, like those are all things that I believe can come from just reaching out to the right people and asking for what you want. I even when I say this out loud, go, I should be doing way more than I'm even doing. You know, and so there's a scale of where we're at and what we expect from ourselves. And even, you know, I'm giving this advice and at the same time, you know, taking my own advice going, I should send a few messages today. You know, where am I at? Yes, yes. Thank you. And a really quick question about this. Do you have any tips in this respect for someone who's more, I would say, is an introvert? Because there may be introverts watching and they're like, I could never just send a message like this and, you know, end up at a conference. Where could someone like that start? Okay, totally fair. So. I think the first tip is just know your niche. Where do you fit? Where do you, or where do you want to fit? Where do you want to put yourself? Um, And then dig into that. So, you know, for me, the example I was using is women in tech because it's a very clear niche. People have groups for it. They have communities for it. And so then I can like ease my way into something where I feel comfortable. Um, And so find whatever that is. That could be web three, that could be video games, that could be 3D printing. And there's communities where you can go and, you know, be part of a small group that has a printing lab and you can go there when you're in town. Um, you know, so there's find that niche because you will automatically feel more comfortable. And then I would say, you don't, if LinkedIn feels like too professional, maybe for you or where you're at, or just like, it feels like these people are maybe unreachable in your, in your gut, which they're not just try, but make sure it's a clear call to action and a clear why find common ground. The reason people don't respond to you and you get that rejection feeling it's because you didn't actually do your research to to make a clear reason why. I get messages all the time, Becky, of people like, hey, I'd love to be connected to you because, you know, we're similar. I just say, I just accept it or don't accept it, but there's no, you didn't ask me a question. You didn't ask me to say anything back. You didn't ask for anything. You didn't make a clear reason why we're connected. So, okay, thank you. But like, there's no response that I'm going to give because you didn't actually ask anything. And so that's a really common mistake. Um, But the other thing, so other thing introverts can do, like use Facebook, use meetup.com. In many countries, that those are still really great places to find local events. You can search by category or keyword. So again, finding something that does feel more comfortable for you. Um, there's a lot of local event sites. Just like search the name of the city, the word events, and there's often a local tourism site that'll post events of the week. You know, which are really great sources. I even use that in my hometown in Canada because they really are often like a tourist site that's done really good research for really high quality events for you. Um, and finally, if you want to really ease in and kind of do it at your own pace, there are friending apps. So I'm sure many people have heard of Bumble for dating, but there's a setting on there for Bumble BFF. There's also one for Bumble Biz, if you're like a startup looking for connections in that way or someone in the business industry. So Bumble BFF, um, you can find individual connections instead of a group setting. And then you can match based on things that you're both already interested in. You know, there's tags. One of my tags, for example, is career focused. I like other people that are career focused, but you know, there's soccer or there's again, like uh, you know, gaming or whatever. And then you can connect on those things. And so um, that might be a good one. And there's probably other versions of friending apps that are amazing out there. So sorry for all those I haven't named. Thank you. No, that is such valuable information. I just wanted to cover the whole spectrum. I also wanted to ask you while I've got you here and you are the head of community. So as you said, you work for a large remote professional organization and you're building community. What are some best practices or tips to try to build community online for a larger organization? How do you keep remote coworkers connected and motivated? Yeah, it's such a big question. And we we could cover this, you know, in an hour long show, show together. But um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Some quick hits are... Um, know what your community wants, know what your, your cult, your, you know, if it's a team or a community of, of members, know what they want. So pay attention, ask them, you know, do they want a big online hackathon or do they want to just have like a speed networking one-on-one kind of, there's an app in Slack called Donut. Donut app is kind of a good one for like basic one-on-one networking like that. Um, but so first you have to know, but then if you are moving forward already and you have all these things and you just really want people to engage with them, one of the big community principles that we talk about often is having like clear opportunities, very obvious, and that everyone is aligned on the goal. Um, so the shared identity is really important of this group or this community. If you're just kind of a bunch of random people and no one, you know, there's no clear identity, it's going to be really hard for you. But the other big thing we talk about is offering permission to participate. So often 
um, we put an event out there and we're like, here's an event, sign up. But you haven't actually told people how to interact with that. So is it, do you want chatter online in advance? Are people are actually, are you hoping people build this connection like before getting there? Is it, you know, is it a fully online event? Is it hybrid, whatever? It's like people don't know unless you give them really clear participation. So that would mean, for example, um, hi, everyone living in this area of the world. We are hosting an event for our company in this area of the world for these kind of people. Um, we really hope you can make it in advance. Why don't you quickly answer, you know, are you coming? What's your favorite, you know, food in that country, whatever, something related to the event. Maybe you're going bowling. Like when's the last time you went bowling, whatever it is. We, we want to hear from every single person who's coming, please post in this channel. That way you've told them very clearly how you want them to engage and you've given them open permission. You've said, if you're this, 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 please write. We want you to. If it's just kind of a soft thing, like, hey, tell us if you're coming. People go like, is, do I tell them? Is it, or maybe I just register. They probably just mean I register. You know, like you, if you don't know, you don't know. And it seems so obvious, but it's so often missed, especially in remote environments to be really kind of like clear on what are the boundaries? Who do I want in here? And then make them feel so comfortable and offer them that permission and how, how they should participate. So that that's, goes a long, long way. Um, and then the other like big tip I'll say is really offer truly remote opportunities. When you do hybrid, it's very hard to do it very well um, because often you're leaving out one group in essence in the way you planned it, no matter what. And then it actually can do kind of sometimes more harm than good. So really buying into doing it fully remotely, even if you have people that could potentially be in person, um, level the playing field in the best way that you can uh, and be an enforcer about things like that around team fun uh, to make sure that everyone's kind of engaging in the way that you know will be the best in the end, uh, even if you have to be a bit of like a stickler about it to help level that playing field. What I'm hearing is just it's communication, whether you're reaching out to someone on LinkedIn and you're trying to remote network or you're planning these online events for a huge organization. It's just being clear, but also, like you said, a call to action. That's so important. I think people miss that so often. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Margot, this has been just such valuable information. I'm so glad we've been able to chat with you here. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us before you go? Oh my goodness, Becky, I think we covered so, so much, but I hope everyone ultimately just feels like they can do this. You made a great point earlier about how the reason that this works is because most people are not doing it. So be brave, do it. Like I said earlier, out of those 10 messages, you know, the other eight, by the way, didn't respond at all. It's not as though I, you know, I got still great minor connections. They didn't respond at all. And that's okay. That's totally like, that's totally par for the course. You should expect that. But you know, to copy, basically copy paste and slightly edit a message 10 times is not that hard. So I really encourage you do it. Do your little mini research first though. Find that common ground between you. Reach out to people where it makes sense. Um, and you can really grow your network. And ultimately, you know, the, like I said earlier, the world's your oyster. There's so many people available to you if you just try. Love that. And Margot, if people want to follow you, where can they go? Absolutely. Yeah. On most social media platforms, I'm Margot A. Miller. So there's an A in the middle there. My name's spelled a little funny. So for those just listening, it's M-A-R-G-A-U-X. So like Margot in French. So Margot spelt wild, Margot A. Miller. LinkedIn, it's just Margot Miller. Um, I've, got, I've got long red curly hair. You can't miss me uh, once you find the picture, once you find the avatar. So really happy to connect with you, to hear from you. It maybe if you use my tactics against me here, we'll be well connected and find some opportunities together. Yeah, maybe you're going to meet Margo for coffee, everyone, after you're watching this and reach <laughs> yeah, out to her. Exactly. <laughs> I want to mention too at the end of this, just so everybody knows, like we actually met through a mutual friend who had gone to an event that you were connected with for Web Summit here in Lisbon. So we met kind of, we met in a classic way, but now we have been following up online and trying to build our LinkedIn our connection. Yeah. So. I, yeah, mean, I will say though, Becky, like we met through a mutual friend who, if you had not also been at the bigger event afterwards, would have still connected us. She would have just sent a LinkedIn message connected or an email connecting the two of us saying, Hey, I think the two of you should meet because that was what she thought. She thought we should meet. And so we, she would have still done it virtually afterwards, you know? So, and I think we yes. would have still gotten to this point today, no matter what we got very lucky to be able to meet. 
but it was a quick meeting and lots of what we did ended up being online anyway. So that follow-up afterwards online is really important too. And we didn't dig too much into that, but if it's the other way around, you meet in person, do a meaningful follow-up of why you should connect. All those same rules apply for the follow-ups as well. Yes. Yes. Well, Margo, I wish you a wonderful rest of the week and I hope you continue to build your remote networking like passion. I'm sure that you will. And I hope everybody watching this decides take that chance and start remote networking. Thank you, Becky. Thank you.